Here's a pen in the movie. I'm not gonna get attacked here. Oh, I can't tell the story. Um, no, no. Jordan Belfort. The Jordan Belfort. Jordan Belfort is with a good expert analysis. Now Jordan Belfort calls Bitcoin a fraud. The financial industry is a world of money, power, and prestige. It's a place where the stakes are high and the risks are great. But in the late 1980s and early 1990s, one firm rose to prominence above all others. A company that embodied the excesses of the era and the darker side of Wall Street. This is the story of Stratton Oakmont. Jordan Belfort, also known as the Wolf of Wall Street, is infamous for his rise and fall in the world of finance. Before he was a successful stockbroker and the founder of Stratton Oakmont, he was just a young man with big dreams and a talent for sales. Belfort was born on July 9, 1962 in the Queensboro of New York City. He grew up in a middle-class family, and as a teenager, he attended Bayside High School in Queens. It was there that he discovered his natural ability to sell. After high school, Belfort attended American University in Washington, D.C., where he earned a degree in biology. However, he quickly realized that science was not his passion, and he set his sights on a career in sales. In the late 1980s, Belfort got his start on Wall Street as a stockbroker at L.F. Rothschild. It was there that he learned the ins and outs of the stock market and honed his sales skills. He quickly made a name for himself on Wall Street and gained a reputation as a charismatic and persuasive salesman. In 1989, Belfort founded his own brokerage firm, Stratton Oakmont, with his friend Danny Perush. At the time, the firm was small, with only a handful of employees working out of a small office in Long Island. After its founding in 1989, Stratton Oakmont began as a small brokerage firm with big ambitions. Its founder, Jordan Belfort, had a vision of creating the best brokerage firm in the world, and he was willing to do whatever it took to get there. In the beginning, Stratton Oakmont consisted of only a small group of people, but they had a vision and were hungry for success. They worked long hours, made a lot of cold calls, and tried every sales tactic in the book. Belfort told in an interview that they were relentless in their pursuit of success. We knew that if we could make our clients money, we would make money too. So we worked hard to find the best investment opportunities and sell them to our clients. We were a tight-knit group and we had each other's backs. We celebrated our successes together and pushed each other to do better. When Stratton Oakmont started to see more success, they knew they were onto something. Stratton Oakmont expanded their team and their offerings and soon they were one of the biggest players on Wall Street. The office was like nothing they had ever seen before. It was fast-paced, high-energy, and always buzzing with activity. We were a force to be reckoned with, and everyone knew it. Stratton Oakmont's success was due in part to its aggressive sales tactics, high-pressure pitches, and questionable investment opportunities. But the firm was also successful because of its dedicated team of brokers who were willing to do whatever it took to make their clients money. Jordan Belfort became a millionaire many times over, and his company's revenues reached over $1 billion at its peak. But with success came scandal, and Stratton Oakmont's downfall was as dramatic as its rise. Despite its eventual downfall, Stratton Oakmont's rise is still a story of ambition, hard work, and success. It's a reminder that in the world of finance, anything is possible if you're willing to work hard and take risks. In the 1990s, Stratton Oakmont was a brokerage firm that specialized in penny stocks. These low-priced, speculative investments were often seen as high risk. But Stratton Oakmont convinced clients to buy them, even if they had little potential for growth. The firm's founder, Jordan Belfort, was the mastermind behind this scheme, and he used aggressive sales tactics and fraudulent practices to keep the money flowing in. 
Belfort and his associates lived lavish lifestyles with yachts, sports cars, and expensive homes, all funded by the money they had swindled from their clients. Belfort was charismatic, and he knew how to sell. He would promise his clients incredible returns on their investments, often promising 10 times the initial investment within months. He used aggressive sales tactics to convince people to buy into his schemes, promising them riches beyond their wildest dreams. However, most of the penny stocks he sold had little potential for growth and were essentially worthless. But eventually, the FBI caught wind of what was going on at Stratton Oakmont, and the fraud was uncovered. In 1998, Belfort and his associates were brought to justice. Belfort pleaded guilty to multiple counts of fraud and money laundering and was sentenced to 22 months in prison. His associate, Danny Perush, received a similar sentence. However, the victims of Stratton Oakmont's fraud were left to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. Many of these victims were everyday people who had been convinced to invest their life savings in penny stocks that were essentially worthless. They had been sold a dream only to wake up to a nightmare. Some were retirees who had hoped to live out their golden years in comfort, only to find themselves struggling to make ends meet. They had lost everything they had worked for their entire lives. Others were young people who had been lured in by promises of easy money, only to realize too late that they had been scammed. They had taken out loans to invest in Stratton Oakmont's penny stocks, hoping to strike it rich. But instead, they were left with mountains of debt and shattered dreams. For all of these victims, the fallout from Stratton Oakmont's fraud was devastating. They had lost not just their money, but also their trust in the financial system and in the people who had convinced them to invest. They had been taken advantage of by people they had trusted, and they felt betrayed. The victims of Stratton Oakmont's fraud were not just faceless statistics. They were real people with real stories. Some had lost their homes, their businesses, and their life savings. They were left with nothing. Some victims never recovered from the losses they suffered. They passed away without ever seeing justice or receiving the compensation they deserved. Their families were left to grieve and wonder what might have been. The downfall of Stratton Oakmont was a long and drawn-out process that began with the FBI's investigation into the firm's practices. While Belfort and his associates were living the high life, buying luxury cars, yachts, and mansions with the money they made from their clients, the FBI was slowly building a case against them. The investigation was extensive, with agents poring over documents and interviewing witnesses to build a case. And what they found was shocking. The evidence revealed that Stratton Oakmont was engaging in a variety of fraudulent practices, including inflating stock prices, charging clients hidden fees, and even selling stocks that didn't exist. As the investigation continued, the noose began to tighten around Belfort and his associates. In 1998, they were arrested and charged with securities fraud and money laundering. The trial was a media spectacle, with Belfort himself becoming a celebrity of sorts. He wrote a memoir, which was later turned into a movie, chronicling his wild lifestyle and the downfall of his firm. Throughout the trial, the evidence against Belfort and his associates was damning. The prosecution presented a mountain of evidence, including recordings of incriminating conversations and testimony from victims. Belfort's defense team tried to argue that he was just a small player in a larger scheme, but it was clear that he was the mastermind behind the fraud. In the end, Belfort was sentenced to 22 months in prison, fined millions of dollars, and ordered to pay restitution to his victims. Many of the firm's clients had lost their life savings and were left with nothing. Some were able to recover some of their losses through lawsuits and settlements, but many never saw a penny of the money they were owed. In the aftermath of the scandal, the financial industry has implemented new regulations and oversight to prevent another Stratton Oakmont from rising up. But the legacy of Belfort and his firm lives on.
a cautionary tale of greed and deception that continues to captivate the public to this day. The story of Stratton Oakmont and Jordan Belfort may have ended in a dramatic downfall, but it has left a lasting impact on the financial industry and society as a whole. So, what are the lessons learned from this cautionary tale, and how can we move forward? One of the key lessons learned from Stratton Oakmont is the importance of investor education. Many of the victims of the firm's fraud were not aware of the risks involved in investing in penny stocks and other speculative investments. Another lesson is the need for greater transparency and oversight in the financial industry. Stratton Oakmont was able to operate for so long without being detected because of the lack of regulation and oversight. In the aftermath of the Stratton Oakmont scandal, the financial industry has implemented new regulations and oversight to prevent similar frauds from occurring again. The SEC has increased its enforcement efforts, and the financial industry has established self-regulatory organizations to monitor and regulate its members. Regulators told that the lessons that were learned from Stratton Oakmont have led to a greater focus on detecting and preventing fraud in the financial industry. We are committed to ensuring that investors are protected and that the markets are fair and transparent. We are also working to improve investor education and awareness. It's important for investors to understand the risks involved in investing and to make informed decisions based on accurate information. But moving forward, there is still much work to be done to restore the public's trust in the financial industry. The legacy of Stratton Oakmont is a reminder that greed and deception can have devastating consequences. But it is also a reminder that we can learn from our mistakes and take steps to prevent them from happening again. And with that, we reach the end of our story about one of the world's most notorious scam companies. I hope you found it informative, and I can't wait to see you again next time.